What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Language Litigation and Integration, Part 147, Casual Conversation 65. Another one of my series, getting close to that magical number. Um, we, we, the, the, the language litigation part, but just the casual conversation section, it's almost a 69. We passed the 69 for the LLI uh, lecture series, so I forgot to call that out, so I always have to celebrate 69 even though there's no 69 on the board. So you know what we do here at the Brad Boas uh, Science, Science, uh, so this isn't science, this is like the news, current events, commentary, suing people, making fun of people, throwing away people's careers, mocking them, trying to get them out of society. That is our goal with these videos. Really to document crime and to do historical lectures, language litigation and integration, but hey, you know, are there laws and rules in this place? Absolutely not. Are there any good people in this world? Absolutely not. Whew, sheesh, sheesh. So you know what we do, current events and talking points, relevant random stories, and I drew up some genitalia on the board. Again, I wanted to keep gender equal, so we, today we are featuring a vulva, which kind of looks like a steamy banana, as you can tell I have not improved my drawing skills. So, and we have the vulva, the, the labias, the clitoris, the bush, and the tight butthole for your viewing pleasure. So, kick back, put your feet up, get ready to be made fun of, to sue people, and to keep documenting how we keep killing people because we just can't behave. Like nobody, like absolutely fucking nobody. So you haven't obviously been making poker videos. I haven't been getting too much on a win streak in that, so that's pretty good. Again, it's like I said, start making poker videos and then start losing 80% of the games. That's, that's the coach you want to sign up with. <laughs> but I like making the content, it's fun to talk over the games. So, any relevant random stories? Just one. Oh yeah, just one more FBI operator that needs to go to prison for the rest of her fucking life. Oh, and uh, yeah, I now know the, I know personally, well, it's, I know the kids personally, but the new Bexley Chief of Police. So, we talking about that, everything else is just same stuff. Current events, talking points, news, responding to podcasts. So first up. Patagonia founder gives away the company to help fight climate change. The current valuation of Patagonia is currently about $3 billion, I believe, and it has $100 million in annual profit. What do I think about that? Rich people starting businesses and then giving it away to fight something. Uh, it's their business, they can do what they want. Do I think $100 million in annual profit is really going to do a big chunk of things for uh, climate change? No. Uh, if you make money, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, but again, another, another hard-working person starts a company, gets privileges, someone gives them a handout in the form of dollar bills to buy their goods, and then they say, oh, now I'm going to give back to the world. Uh, I don't know. Again, just some, do I think it will have great, great impact? No. Obviously a good thing, good and well-intended. Again, climate change is just one of those things where it's just like, I, I have not seen anything besides insecurity from both sides, meaning... We need to protect the trees from the, like the, the, not, gonna, not political at all, but just from like the, the conservatists of the land and stuff. And then it's like, oh, we can just burn fossil fuels forever. It's like, I uh, just haven't seen convincing arguments or again, clear, clear what, do, what practically, what do you do type of deal. So I don't know, that popped up. So we had Ron DeSantis sends migrants to Martha's Vineyard to make a point. The locals pitch in to help get sued by migrants, and I think the police are investigating. What is the most practical solution? So again, I'm sure anybody in, in American politics has heard of this. Our Florida governor sent 50 uh, um, illegal immigrants to Martha's Vineyard, which I don't know where the fuck that is. I don't know if that's an actual vineyard, if it's like a place. I don't know. Are we Michael Batnick? Are we on Martha's Vineyard? Are we in Martha's Vineyard? I don't even know what the fuck that is. Of course, again, they never... They never actually be specific enough so you know if it's like a, if it's a town, is it a city, is it a, is it a, is it a, what the fuck is a Martha's Vineyard? So again, we never want to be specific with our words because then there's more ambiguity and we can sound cool. And like we're in the cool club, we're, 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 we're the cool kids. But again, that was, you know, the, the left was saying, look at all the locals pitching into help. And the rights were saying, ha 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 ha, look, you can't even deal with 50 illegal immigrants. How about 4.2 over the, the southern border? Well, fuck, good fucking Christ. And again, it's just one, one group of beta males pointing and jeering and saying, ha, 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 and the next one saying, ha, 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 and ha, 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 ha. 
But again, again, like, I, I've, again I've been very uh, not not specific about what I would do with uh, 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 immigration because I just again I don't know. Not literally, like I said going to the border, seeing it happening, as opposed to like again, what practical steps do you do? Do you build a wall? Do you do this? Do you do that? Here I can tell you one thing absolutely definitively for fucking sure to increase or decrease illegal immigrants over the southern border for sure. I want you to take a guess what it is. Legalize drugs. All of them. Who is supplying all of the coyotes? Coyotes. Is it is it is it Jorge over there, the the orange farmer? Is it the is it Gabriela over there, the, the seamstress? Or is it the cartels with more money than fucking large-scale corporations? Who's, who's financing those things? Who's doing that? Legalize the drugs, take away the, the revenue streams of the cartels and the illicit uh, organizations. Why, why, what's the motivation for people being illegal immigrants? And show me one person that doesn't actually want to live in their hometown or their homeland. Or again, maybe again, I hate my hometown, but like... I'm a special exception because I got scapegoated from the society love from everybody. But people want to live, they, they like their culture, they like to live where they want to be, or where they're from. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of heritage people do. A lot of Americans are fucking trash. But the reason they have to leave their, their hometowns or want their to leave their hometowns is because of violence, because they want a better life for their families. So if you legalize drugs, these cartels can't form organizations, you remove the motivation of people wanting to leave their hometown. I'm, I'm a big guy of clean up your own shit before trying to go to somewhere else. As a humanitarian, someone wants everyone to do better. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about anybody, but as a practical person, I, and I really don't. That's not like me, you know, hyping up for a video. I really don't give a fuck about anybody. I want to tell you, when you burn off all your nerve endings, you don't care. When I see people not knowing how to behave and being so pathetic they refuse to change their behavior, I don't care about them. I don't. And so, if you take away the motivation for people wanting to leave, there wouldn't be any immigrants. And so that would be the number one most definitive thing to do to limit the, the, the influx, the motivation of people wanting to leave, the people able to finance the, the movements. And so, but again, that's, that's hilarious because again, it's all, again, you got Ted Cruz and whoever the Republicans are, like, you know, for the Martha Vineyard stuff, it's like, these are the, see, see, you couldn't even handle this, but look, look what we do here. And they would say, oh, well, that's not legalized drugs because, well, we don't, we, we, because, because if, remember, like, if, as long as you make it illegal, people don't do drugs anymore. And that's how it works. Again, I saw Andrew Huberman tweet some bullshit about cannabis and schizophrenia and some other made-up disease. Again, we, we talked extensively about schizophrenia and the amyloid plaques and even dementia. I think the dementia, the myelin sheath is schizophrenia and amyloid plaque buildup is uh, uh, dementia or Parkinson's. Or not maybe Parkinson's, but dementia. And then, and then how some people have amyloid plaque and not amyloid plaque, and it's really just like a state of awareness. All mental illness is really just like awareness and growing up and people not being able to accept that they were stagnated for their entire lives and not give a fuck about anything. So it's, it's hilarious. It's the same people that are saying, look, you can't handle 50. We have 4.2 million. Oh, we won't legalize drugs. Huh? What are we going to do? Oopsie doopsies, lemon scoopsies. They're just going to, who knows? They're just going to hope, hope, pray to God. Let's pray to God, the dead guy from 30,000 years ago, to help us. God, country, and family, not practical actions of statute that would actually help somebody. Nope. Legalized drugs was the number one thing to stop the motivation of why people have to flee their hometowns and come, come across the southern border. Absolute fucking facts. And it, again, cannabis specifically is absolutely, uh, absolutely fucking medicine. And as we've watched with the, I think it was the Carl Hart on Lex Friedman's podcast, um, basically saying again, any, any drug, and the, the specific drug interaction, drugs is a blanket term, but the only real difference between hard drugs and soft drugs is, is are the ligands on organs that, that will shut down your respiration or your heart or actually kill you, potential for overdose. But the response to a drug interaction is, again, the state of the person. And if, if they feel safe, if they're caught up on their chores, if, they're all, if, they, if they feel like their life's in order, any drug they do is going to be a positive experience. Bonafide science, but do we educate ourselves now? Are we competent in science? No. Do we spread our insecurity and form groups and, and agree with people that have the same insecurity? Yes. So, that was those fucking just, just, just Ron DeSantis, you your family, man. You're so fucking stupid, fucking trashy piece of fucking garbage, man. Yep, go back to Florida. Go back to here. We don't lie about, we don't lie about history here in America, do we, guys? Yep, nope, nope, nope. Except for every fucking day. Literally, literally every day. So, again, be a hypocrite, project out into the world, and say, well, that's what everybody else is doing. 
BS with Jake Paul, Hater Hotline. I watched episode six and literally just watched episode seven. It was uploaded right before I started doing this, this video. But again, yeah, I still think some slow parts. Definitely, the, again, the conversation, not the host. D-Cut and Julia are fine. Um, but I just have <laughs> um, the, the, for the Hater Hotline on episode six, this dude calls in. He's not an actual hater. He just wants some fucking money. And then Jake Paul was like, how much money do you need, man? You know, so the, the, the heater hotline from the Norris dude, that shit was fucking funny. Apparently he's actually flying out to fight D-Cut, so that should be pretty fun. But, uh, <laughs> the, when, when the dude starts at, asking for fucking money, I just say, jealousy is fucking pathetic. If I was Jake Paul there, I would tell him to fucking kill himself and just hang him the phone up. So yeah, I would not be giving out money on the heater hotline. Absolutely not. Platform shoes on Julia, just in general, not Julia. Not the, the hostess specifically, but platform shoes. I don't, know how, I don't know. I don't think it's a good fashion look. I don't know. It doesn't strike me as fashionable platform shoes. Just like the tennis shoes with like four inches of like rubber on the bottom. So that definitely stuck out on episode six. Um, the sports game rating guy guest was very good. I thought that was a really, really cool segment. And, anything, and I'm not like, I'm not a sports dude. Like, I, I, I like all the, the current event podcasts. And that, that we've talked about, all the popular ones out there. But, um, because I don't, I don't know what's going on in the sports world and I still watch the show. So, again, I like, I like the actual sports content. That's probably the only time I watch a sports show at all. Again, sports show, not podcast. Again, I certainly think it would still do fine as a podcast, but again, I do think there's an angle for a sports show if you can get the conversation a little better and more developed. Still, uh, still some slow parts through episode six and episode seven. Again, I like the sports game, game rating guest. Like, who, who gets the highest ratings on, like, NBA 2K, stuff like that. Saying random words at the press conference is fucking hilarious. At the end of episode six, they show, like, a, uh, he's, like, challenged to say three words at a press conference. That type of humor, I find that shit absolutely fucking gold. Where it's, like, it's not, and I'm not, I, I, I like, I like, uh, like, uh, pranks that don't, like, uh, affect people. Like, it, it can't, like, where no one gets hurt, but like, genuine, well thought out, good, good things like that. It, it, in something like this where again, you have to say three random words at a serious press conference like your friends only know that shit to me is fucking hilarious so I thought I thought that was that was very good episode seven they talk a lot about dating a athlete or celebrity I thought that was actually a decent segment I did not like they're talking about Tom Brady and Giselle I think is her name a, a supermodel or something in, in general forget the topic I do not like when people talk about type hop, hypothetical things about not knowing the situation at all and, and during that interaction, you can see a lot of times they don't even know exactly what's going on with Tom Brady and his wife. So it's like you can't really make any great statements or conversation about it. As opposed to just, again, talking about, you know, uh, Julia and, and Jake dating. I, I thought, again, just talking about forgetting dating and talking about something, not just sitting there conjecturing and hypotheticals about stuff you really don't know. And there's definitive facts out there, meaning we don't know why Tom Brady, it, it, what exactly happened between Tom Brady and his wife. <laughs> so... I thought that was a decent section to just talk about dating, talking about dating an athlete or a celebrity. Um, my thoughts on that, again, I don't know. Dating, again, I drew a vagina. That's, I, I've seen some things on the internet that seems to say that vaginas are real out there in the world. I, have, I haven't seen one in many, many, many years. So I don't, I'm not sure if that's an actual th a thing that exists in the world. But assuming it's out there, dating, dating, for me... Yeah, again, I can't find a woman that would like to want to date me, so that would be cool. Again, I'm certainly not a celebrity or, or accomplished or an athlete or anything. Just a just a ex-drug dealer and made one Bitcoin trade, and now I'm a wannabe YouTuber. Sweet. But do I have any thoughts on dating an athlete, celebrity? I don't know. By the time I my literally the day my career is published is the day I would be retired on like 15 different ways, like literally. So, so I won't. Uh, me personally, I don't have like a. Uh, in my career ambitions. I want to be a family man. That's my fucking goal. I do science facts and I breathe and I can put, video, put videos out about it. It's like, how do I go on a walk with my girlfriend? How do I go, on a, go, get, a, go get a meal? How, how do I feel safe enough to eat? Like, it's just, my life is just so dating. Again, not die. I've never gotten comfortably past the not die stage of life. Never. Never. So dating is not like a thought. And I swipe on Tinder every single day. Just as a mechanic, I'll get through a try to date, date fucking impossible. I don't get matches. Matches. I don't get a single fucking match on Tinder. And I swipe until either I'm, I can't swipe anymore on the day, but more often than not, it's we've run out of potential matches from ages 22 to 32, and, and from 33 to like 54. 
every single day, not a single chance I would ever get a girlfriend. Not possible. Getting blocked by PBD email. Again, I just, I just don't, I have blocks and quotations. I don't know like how, how, how big corporate emails work where you get an automated response or if they actually read over some secretary or some shit. But PBD said, yeah, man, on the, on the 9-11 guest you had on your podcast, you said if you have more information about 9-11 or more specifically you said, who else is there? Who out there with a big name? Who else there that's accomplished or established and knows what they're fucking talking about agrees 100% there's no chance it wasn't bombs at 9-11? Me. But if, if, if you don't let me integrate into the group of people, then you can't react to me in a group of people. And you just scapegoat me and force me into fucking slavery. So again, Patrick by David, I want to take your entire business from you. I want to take everything you fucking have. I hope you, oh, 200, 200 million in cash, PBD. I'm, I'm suing you for full rate, for full fucking rate. And, and nobody can pay me anything. And nobody can afford what the fuck I've done. So it doesn't matter. You've committed crimes. You will go to jail for it. If not, you will be a part of the people that just get away from the major crimes that have ever committed. Ever. And I'm a human being. That's just my life just gets snuffed out. So I'll tell you the story about the FBI operator. I'll just tell it now. I guess why not? So... Again, I'm just, again, I, I, I give it up again. You, you, call, you call somebody at the FBI, somebody who makes $35,000 a year, that has no values, that thinks there's law enforcement good, the instant they get offended, they're going to hang up the phone. That is just what my mother has hung up the phone on me, my brother has hung up the phone on me, my business partners have hung up the phone on me, everybody I've ever interacted with, they just can't take facts. And then scares them to deal. Open, crack the phone. <laughs> nah, sweet. But so, again, this is right after the the, the, the wonderful interaction with Sabine Hasenfelter tits. And I, I made a whole video about that, so I don't need to review that. She tweeted out something funny today. It was like, if I had, if I had one line for everybody, it would be, be nice. Uh, everyone hurts too. And while you're at it, go look at my Patreon. Like, is that supposed to be like a joke? Like, if, that, if that's mocking people who, th who, who, who think that they need to be treated with decency and humanity, and saying go 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 pay me some fucking money that's funny but if it's if it's if that was a serious tweet again that's that's the level of maturity of people i'm interacting with incompetent selfish privileged the minute they get challenged they get offended and then they there's they're all everyone else is like that all pathetic and they're all oh it's like all of my old fucking friends are all just so goddamn fucking pathetic and incompetent every single one so the only reason the only, if that was a tweet to be mocking them and say like, go give me some fucking money that's funny but it, of course not she's just the literate retarded idiot got a little bit of social momentum, and now she's like, ah, oh, I'm still a literate and confident, but look at me, I'm making cute thumbnails for my YouTube. This is a stupid fucking bitch. Fuck Sabine Hausenfelder. But yeah, once they, ever all the Twitter people were ganging up on me, how could you ever teach the great Sabine? <laughs> and I'm just like, so tired of this shit. So I, get, I, 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 mean, I don't call the FBI regularly anymore because they don't, they're so incompetent. They refuse to do anything besides murder their own citizens. They just refuse to. And so... I call this chick, and this is operator 59740 at the Cincinnati jail office. The phone calls go like this. And sometimes when I call people, I do get, like, I'll go, I'll go directly through to somebody without anything. Just like, if you call the FBI, you, you, you'll automatically get a teleprompter, you know, click this for things highlighted in the news. Click this if you know your party's extension. Click this if, if for other federal offenses or something. And so I get, I get that, I'd probably say... 50% of the time, 60% of the time, but then 30 or 40% of the time, I'll just go directly through to somebody. And again, I, it, it, the, 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 the fucking retarded operator might not know who I am, but the manager is, whoever the fuck is running this shit absolutely knows who the fuck I am. So they, they answer the phone like this. If, if, you, if you go, it, when I go directly through, they just say, you know, FBI, you know, what's going on? But if I do the teleprompter, then I just get the $35,000 a year dick sucker. So... I get, I do the teleprompter thing, and they, they start the phone call off like this, you know, what is your first and last, you get connected, what is your first and last name, uh, where are you calling from, and what federal crime has been committed, uh, committed. And then I, the only thing I say is that Article 1, Section 8, Subsection 7 of the United States Constitution is violating, and it's cost me hundreds of billions of dollars, which is on the low end, like, like, like provably the fucking low end. And so, and she just laughs. She literally just laughs. And she's like, slow down, sir, slow down, sir. Because she's reacting to the resonance of my voice. People are programmed to default. They just go back to the default mode network. That's what language is, it's just reactionary. And when she does, when she hears logic and order that she can't understand, she starts short-circuiting 
then she hears hundreds of billions of dollars and she fucking laughs. Please net 59740, and they won't give you their name. They're the biggest gang in the fucking world. They refuse to fucking enforce the Constitution to the point where every time I exist, every time I do science faster than I breathe, that is new property. It has real value. And so I wish I wish the dude who would have bu tried to bust in with a fucking nail gun would have got a little farther and closer to 59740. Not a threat in any way. These people are threatening me by refusing to enforce the law. Then I can't even speak about it. They laugh at me and they tell me my property is worth anything. Bitch, your life isn't worth fucking anything. Your life is worth fucking nothing. I say that as a statement of law. I have a right to my property. Here is federal law enforcement. They refuse to do so. They're probably setting up another coup in another country right now, slaughtering people right now. And then saying, freedom in America. Fucking, fucking disgusting. So FBI operator 59740 in Cincinnati, you're a retarded, retarded cunt, and uh, you're going to jail. You're going to fucking jail for refusing a direct fucking order to enforce the fucking law. I'm sure you're a fat, retarded cunt. First cousin fucking whore. But Sherry Papini in Redding, California is sentenced to 18 months in jail and 36 months of supervised release for making material or false statements to the FBI about kidnapping. Again, there's two types, omission and commission. Doing something and for, for refusing to do something. They are both sin, they are both inconsistent, they are both illegal to the same level. So if you make material or false statements to the FBI and she, she lied about getting kidnapped and she was having an affair with an ex-boyfriend, but the prosecution recommended one month and seven months supervised, and she's ordered to pay $310,000 in damages. So the FBI can refuse to enforce the law, can mock you, can be disrespectful, can steal your property and benefit from it, but if you lie to them, then you go to fucking jail for, for the, the, the time they wasted. Well, well, another fat fuck had to go eat a donut and go investigate something when he just really wants some camaraderie to sit around the office with all the boys and talk about how much great work they've done. Like that worthless fuck on Patrick Bet David who said he's reducing human trafficking. Nope, I am reducing. I am the fucking person working for this fucking species. You were the dirty fucking things and you die in fucking filthy fucking shame, period. That is your legacy, period. You're not lying about history, period. So again, I can't speak out against the FBI enough. They are fucking disgusting. All law enforcement are fucking disgusting because they refuse to enforce the law. Not as a gangbanger, not as a drug dealer, as someone who as it wants to start a family and leave this fucking country, and I can't, and I'm 29 years old. Disgusting. This world is just fucking disgusting. And so, that's about all the FBI stuff. Oh, but I, I, I know the Bexley chief of police. Uh, shout out to Lewis, Lewis, Nathaniel Lewis, who's, um, I'm pretty sure he's on my LinkedIn, chief of police. Where, where, where's our new chief of police? Yep, Gary D. Lewis Jr. Yeah, man, he's, uh, Nate Lewis, his son, is pretty much was best friends with Richard Reese, the guy who I used to be friends with, good friends with, who Richard Reese got a fraudulent uh, licensure to practice law while stealing my fucking property. And now his best buddy's dad's the chief of police in Bexley. So worthless fucking pile of fucking shit. Gary, Gary Lewis, or what the fuck, that's the kid, I don't know, Gary, what the fuck is this guy, yeah, Gary D. Lewis Jr., I am suing you, man, enforce the fucking law, your family steals from me, my god, what a disgusting pile of shit you are, Gary Lewis, fucking garbage, fuck him and his fucking family, and see, yep, life moves on and Brad's life doesn't start, but you guys are refusing to enforce the law. You are stealing my fucking property. You are feeding your family off of it. And you're improving your career. Brought in fucking prison. So never, never show any fucking respect to Bex Bexley Chief of Police Gary Lewis. Dirty, dirty pile of fucking shit. Black Ariel causes a shit storm. I watched the, uh, the, 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 the clip. I saw Matt Walsh say something funny. I actually thought was, I think Matt Walsh is fucking retarded. But he did say something that was kind of funny and scientifically incorrect. Because, again, this is another direct quote of him stealing something from me. It, he said something to the effect of, you know, it's hard to believe something. I, I don't see how this causes any backlash, any, any, any. I don't see how this is like a thing. But it is. Because, you know, you have, you have your hillbilly hick fucking first cousin fuckers in the deep south. And yeehaw, they don't, they in what pair. And they just like to see a what aerial. 
And then and she's like white skin. First of all, we have to differentiate. First of all, if you want to be, again, there's brown and pink. And our, is this red bone or yellow bone, right? How dark is the bone? So this, more, this isn't black area, this is yellow bone area. It says come correct with the culture, guys. So this is a yellow bone aerial. And Matt Walsh says some, a, an animal that lives deep in the sea wouldn't, wouldn't be as dark, which is actually true. But that's like for deep, deep sea, right? Translucent fish at the bottom of the ocean. How about orca whales? How about dolphins? Are those, are those pale? Are those closer to porcine or, or like gray? But, and, and orca whales have black on them. So how could that happen, Matt Walsh? Oh, but I just, again, the reason the quote sticks in my head is because he's thinking about me, and that is where that quote comes from. Again, when I say this is a foundation of logic and history, it is. And then you guys just say, oh, <laughs> I do Stephen doubt it. <laughs> so I have no idea how that, was, that, that causes any problem whatsoever. Again, it's this yellow bone aerial. This was not black aerial. This is yellow bone. Fucking returns. Gameplay from Grand Theft Auto 6 has been leaked, confirmed to be real. Didn't even really watch the gameplay. I would, I would certainly be a buyer of Grand Theft Auto 6. Certainly buy uh, Martin Modern Warfare 2 coming out later this year on Xbox. Like, what's the motivation for that? I think just hackers doing shit. But it was a third party broke into. I think it's two two set entertainment. I, 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 or inter, if I see the company on CNBC all the time, but yeah, I think uh, just hackers hacking shit to hack shit. But a third party broke into the servers, got the gameplay, and then the, the, de the developers were devastated. The emo extreme emotion in the end, I just don't get it. I just don't get it because I'm not privileged. I have never been so privileged where I can just, just be extremely emotional because if I, if I act like a human being in any capacity, I get scapegoated instantly. So I get, if I get really happy or really sad, it's just no. In Puerto Rico, in near total blackout after being hit by Hurricane Fiona, yeah, natural disasters obviously fucking suck, but a whole country, I guess it's not a whole, whole region of the United States, without power, that kind of fucking stinkies. And I feel siento low, I feel it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, not, it was on the news. Natural disasters fucking suck. It was one of those things we're getting. Pandemics, biological disease, and natural, natural disasters were like fucking shit. It's just like, ah, oh, life, sweet. I said in the in the video with uh, talking about the Twitter interaction with Sabines, the cr groupies and cronies and f little fucking gang members. I said Terracita, probably not small. I think I said small world, but La Terre is the Earth, Le Monde is the world. So Terracita, assume that's base. I, I, don't, I don't know. It could be. It could be. I think it's small Earth then. Maybe not small world. I don't know. I, I picked up one thing in. Nepali this morning. What was it? What was it? Tamalai, 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 Kosto, Sa, Kamalai, Kamalai, uh, Kamalai, Kosto, Sa. How are you? Someone bust out some uh, Nepali of the Nepali dudes. I literally asked him the language they spoke, and he says Nepali. And then I come back home and start googling Tibetan. I have no fucking clue why I started doing that. Again, it's, just, it's literally that fast. It's just what it, it's the sounds. The sounds of where, the, where, they, where they, they don't articulate properly or, or this or that. Because again, I already have the pronunciation. I just need to get the emphasis of the, you know, I can speak, all, make all the phonemes, all, all the phonetics. But, but again, when I'm reading the, the whatever script they use, again, it's just not like if I type in, how are you? And then I, and then I type in something else really similar. And it's like clearly, clearly changing words, and I, I can't, I can't reference the letters. It, it just, it just, uh, I don't have much motivation. So I'll probably just pick up the phrases again until I, if I ever learn whatever script Nepali or er, writes in. Let me make sure I'm still rolling. My camera wasn't fully charged. Typically, always can always, always punctual and ready. My camera wasn't fully charged today, but it's set at like three hours recording time, so we should be good. Let me double check. So we're right around 30 minutes. So a couple more, a couple more talking points. So I watched PBD with Hodge Twins, number 186. As I said on my poker video, those were clones. That was not Keith and Kevin. And PBD, uh, fun fact, I remembered their voices. I instantly knew who Keith and Kevin, the difference was. I used to watch them all of the time. Um, again, I, just, I, don't, I don't follow much political content, really. Again, I tune into Ben Shapiro to get talking points every now and again. Honestly, most of the days when I'm 
writing stuff down. I can watch the whole episodes unless there's something super interesting going on. And again, these, the things that I watch are just to get the stories. I don't agree with anybody. Everyone's fucking retarded. And so, big, uh, genuine fans of the Hodge Twins. Um, I, 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 was, I was watching them when they were doing, again, more fitness type of content. And I'm not on Instagram at all. But I see them pop up on Twitter once. And I think I do follow them on Twitter. But they did not say Sugar Walls one time. Like, if you know the, the Sugar Walls is Hodge Twins, Hodge Twins is Sugar Walls. So those were clones, that was not Keith and Kevin, that was fake news, that was a lie. That was a Gucci clone. But they talk about di uh, parents discipline children with violence, what do I think? Meaning like spanking, paddling, whipping, well not spanking and paddling. Um, I don't think it works. It might work to instill fear might work for an insecure adult who doesn't have uh, any idea how to be an actual leader. Doesn't, again, they don't, know how to, they don't know how to behave, so they're going to assert authority over with violence. It's every beta organism ever, everyone. And so I would not, I would not be using violence. I, again, I would never have kids. Again, that vagina thing, I think it's required to have a child. And I'm not, I'm still not convinced those are real out in the wild. But uh, I, will, I will not discipline children with violence. Um, I I don't think it works very well. Um, again, another cultural thing kind of going away. Again, we, we, we have all of these things like, should we legalize cannabis? What should we do with immigration? We can look at definitive things in human behavior and statute and see things consolidate. Again, like, low, you know, I'm fully for the death penalty for appropriate crimes, but the death penalty going down over across countries just for like random shit and you know, beating children is going down over all, all people. So it's like, we can look at things that are certainly consolidating behavior and statute, and then we look at other things and we say, no, nope, we're just going to keep stagnate that because, again, we're going to all card our values. We like this, we like this. I'm not developed enough to have an opinion here, so no. Boop, hard stop. Everybody I've ever met, I've, again, everybody. Every time I scroll Reddit, Twitter, everybody. The spelling bee. I prove not spell, I can spell. <laughs> but, no, just his, his historical thing, like casting a spell on somebody. Obviously, voodoo's not fucking real. Cursing, placing a curse, spelling. Just another linguistic thing that always, that always comes up in my intuition. Casting a spell, spelling. Ordering syllables in, in words. So some histor historical thing there. I don't know, it could be the 1400s with the witches. But again, I really think it's denial. It's denial over the, like a witch saying something that the group doesn't like and then they have to burn them. <laughs> this is amazing seeing this shit and living this shit, man. I have re received the brunt of every fucking illiterate person on this fucking planet and nobody cares. They talk about the royal family generational wealth. How did it come to be? Where did the royal family come from? Back when there was before countries and feuds and big families and shit. So they established power way back in the day by trading, go marry this daughter, do marriages for political alliances and stuff. And so where does the... Where does, where does the the, the royal family come from is ancient feudal times and the generational wealth and they're talking about it's like 50 billion dollars of real estate and they're like how do they make income it's like my nigga what nigga what <laughs> but I don't know if they, if, they, if they take any money from taxes they probably do they probably don't have to pay taxes and I think the royal family is just like a fucking fucking stupid fucking shit Okay, we need kings and queens, we need winners and losers, we need heroes and villains, and they're just exaggerations. And so, yeah, the generational wealth comes from actual generations and being feudally rich from, for a long, long time. You know, so didn't say sugar walls once, clones. But actually, genuine fans of the Hodge twins, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. Politic, politics doesn't make me mad. Literally, literally, politics is, is illiteracy. Like, I can't do politics. I criticize people's behavior and they, and they think that's political or they think it's offensive. As we saw with Sabine, I literally just state facts and people say, ah! And then they just throw a wiki article at me. They just hang up the phone. They just kick me out of the group. They just refuse to enforce the law. They just hang up the phone at the FBI. They laugh at me. And then they come into your house and harass you. Sweet. Putin calls for military reserves and orders air, airlines to stop selling tickets to men 18 to 65. So yeah, Russia's getting absolute clap, cheeks clapped. He's that wop, wop, wop. That wet ass pussy. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck, obviously fuck Putin. Uh, 
And just, just, just some of the review again. This, this is a beta male that's going to take it to the grave. They're going to serve their group, the old Soviets, whoever it is, and they're just going to take it to the grave because that's their service to the world. And they're just stagnated. They refuse to change their behavior. Uh oh, another top businessman in Russia. He had another accident. He fell. He fell. He fell out of a. This, uh, <laughs> out of a 10-story building with no chuck coursing through a system, four bullet holes, and his fingers cut off. Yeah. So, and, but, so I thought that was interesting. So they're, they think they're drafting, like, mobilizing. I don't know, there's some, some buzzword in Russian that caught the media's attention. But mobilizing, I think it's like 300,000 different people. So 100%, I think, what Ukraine will win, again, is not a war strategist, just seeing what's going on. So, I, 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 I'll predict it, and then sometime in the next six months, total, total, total fucking guess. No, no, no idea. But I don't know. That's my guess. Last talking point for today: Jamie Dimon calls crypto Ponzi scheme, uh, testifying for Congress. He said Warren Buffett already, already called it a rat poison. And again, this is a funny thing, is because it's like I haven't been actually paid money, and I've served this species in ways a lot of people fucking can't. These people make a little bit of money and they still just, just stagnate. Uh, cryptocurrency is a Ponzi scheme. No, a Ponzi scheme is when you sell, you take somebody like, like uh, who is the big one? The, the mortgage dude. You pay off loan by taking in more money and you just keep doing that. That's a fucking Ponzi scheme. That's not what's happening here. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing to see people, Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, are these people, are they still alive? Yeah, I'll definitely see that on the news. But... <laughs> They just make some money, and then again, like how how and like social matters and, and immigration and drug policy, those things that matter for health and life. Money really doesn't, especially not that you know investors making like million, billion, trillion dollars. So it's like it, finance is such a non-political area, non you know emotional area in any capacity whatsoever, and they still stagnate. They still demonstrate the same fucking behavior that has ruined everything on this fucking planet. <laughs> so no, definitely not a Ponzi scheme. Not in, in Ponzi schemes well defined. Crypto is not, and again, we have virtual currency today, right now, right now. It's not backed by anything. It hasn't been since 1950 or 60 or whatever. My God, it, 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 to me, it's just amazing. Again, part 147, casual conversation 65. All I see is people stagnating with no values, trying to make a decision, and all they say is, "Don't share my insecurity and don't do that when it's the right thing you should do." To legalize those drugs, remove the motivation for people to have need to be Im to to immigrate. And take away the power of the fucking cartels. It's that fucking simple. I do want like, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm sure they're still active, but I mean like how? So like I, I just don't know like what's the like when Escobar or the Narcos, the show I'm watching. You know how? What's like the actual? Is it a bunch of independent like kind of smaller groups, or is it actually like huge huge cartels? So I, I just don't, I just don't know the scenario. But certainly if you, if you legalize drugs, you take away the motivation, you remove a lot of the violence and the motivation for people needing to immigrate. So I probably I might, do it, I might do a poker video after this. Again, I thoroughly like doing, getting to the felt, not getting to the Hublots recently. Um, any other stories? Nah, just the, the FBI operator and seeing, seeing I personally know the Bexley chief of police <laughs> and I don't have constitutional rights to the point where I can't start a fucking family. I've been tortured profoundly and extensively for six going on seven years with absolutely no... I had no the, the profound torture's literally been since college. So that's that's 19. Yeah, so that's, that's a decade. A decade of profound and extensive torture. And you said before that, my life was still shit. But it wasn't like, again... Because when, when you have... Now I'm a grown-ass man, and I've been a grown-ass man for over a decade. But it's like, when I was a younger kid, I was the same level of derivation. And when I would demonstrate proofs around people, it was more of the, oh, look how, look how far you're going to go. You're so smart. You sound intelligent like the YouTube commenter does. But they're not going to tell a, a kid that they disagree with him and go fuck himself. They'll tell it to an adult, and that's fine. But again, beta males re revert to violence. If you disrespect me or threaten my life enough, I'm going to put you fucking down. Pass out, I don't give a shit. And so it's just like dealing with these goofy fucks who are going like, to like, I'm going to fight you, I'm going to fight you. If you're going to threaten me, I'm going to defend myself to the fullest extent. Besides that, I'm not going to antagonize you. I'm not going to hype you up. I'm going to de-escalate it all at, at, at all possible. If at, if at all possible. And so I just want to get away from these weird fucks that can't fucking behave at all. 
It's impossible. He will not release my property and let me leave. And so we're not lying about history to any capacity whatsoever. You lie about history in one public what capacity, whether you're making $30,000 a year or $30 million a year, I'm going to take everything you fucking have. Everything. And so thank you for watching Language Litigation Integration Part 147, Casual Conversation 65. See you on the next one.